Hi there, Rory. Back How for the questions. Hello, <laughs> as you can see. I'm getting ready to go back on tour again tomorrow. I was just home for a few days. We were in Birmingham last week and that was just the reaction we got in Birmingham this time was phenomenal. Um, I had a great week there. Um, we got such a welcome. It was it was it was amazing. It was uh, we played Birmingham quite a lot of times. We started off in the Alexandra Theatre and now we're playing the arenas. But I don't ever remember getting a, such a wonderful reaction as we did last week. And we had some lovely people, friends of ours who came. Adam Woodjat and his wife Bev. Now Adam you'd know as Ian Beale from EastEnders. We'd Sam Bailey and her husband. Sam won the X Factor in 2013 I think. And we also had an old friend of mine that I was thrilled to meet up with again. I hadn't seen her in years. It was a girl called Jackie Graham. Now Jackie had a lot of hits in the 80s and uh, I hadn't seen her in over 30 years and she came along with her husband Tony and her daughter Natalie and the last time I'd seen Natalie, Natalie was only four or five and she's now a gorgeous looking woman um, and the years, we just seemed to, the, the years seemed to melt away and we were talking about old times and it was like we'd only met last week um, so I was thrilled to meet her. And what moments when you were on stage tickled you? Um, oh, when I was on stage, oh God, when I was on stage on Saturday in the matinee, um, Brendan at the bow, somebody said something, uh, Brendan said, somebody, friends of mine or somebody said they're friends of Rory on Facebook or something like that. And with that, it was like a load of people in the audience started screaming, Rory, 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 that never happened to me before. I couldn't, I was, I, was, I just fell around the place laughing, it was unbelievable. In an arena there were all these people in the audience screaming, Rory, Rory, Rory. It was a lovely moment, I absolutely adored it. So that was that, and we're off to Manchester now, this week. Oh, we've played there before, the Manchester, the MEN, um, I think it's called something else now, I'm not sure, the Manchester Arena. Um, so we're looking back to get, looking forward to getting back to Manchester. And what else is there? Um, all round to Mrs Browns. That was on this week. Did you see me with Ross Kemp? My God, I made a holy show of myself. Um, but he was lovely. He was fantastic. Pixie Lot was great. Um, this week was just uh, all round to Mrs Browns has just gone fabulously well. Um, the reaction to it is unbelievable. Um, I know Brendan is over the moon. With the reaction to it and I'm over the moon for Brendan because um, he took a big chance. Mrs Brown was successful as Mrs Brown's boys and doing the Christmas specials and everyone knew that but he took a, he took a, he really took a big chance by putting Mrs Brown in a different situation. I love the fact that he kept her in the house. He didn't mess with the format of Mrs Brown's boys but he kept Mrs Brown in the house and she's going to can go wilder. This allows Mrs Brown to go wilder than she could in Mrs. Brown's Boys, um, the TV, the Christmas specials, and it's a format that really suits Brendan, and I'm thrilled for him, um, and I'm thrilled to be part of it. And as you've seen, I was with Pamela Anderson, I was holding her hand, and here I was with Grant Mitchell, uh, Ross Kemp last week, and um, I just, I'm having a, I had a ball doing it. So everything is going well. So let's get to the questions. <laughs> right. So we just have some random questions yeah. here, and uh, who's who's the person you'd least like to get stuck in a lift with? Oh, let me see. There's no particular person I'd like to get... There's, I can't think of one individual, um, because even if it was somebody I disagreed with, or somebody... I, like, the fact that I'd be stuck in the lift would mean they couldn't get away from me. I could give them a piece of my mind. Um, so I can't think of anybody like that. I all I can think of, I'd hate to be stuck in the lift with somebody that suffered from, um, is it agoraphobia? No, what is it? Claustrophobia? Or could you imagine being stuck in a lift with someone that was, mind you, if they were claustrophobic, they probably wouldn't get into a lift. Or somebody eating food you don't like. Oh, that's true. People, <laughs> noisy eaters, I can't stand. Or someone, but mind you, people don't have nits, but not anymore. They used to have years ago. But you wouldn't want to be stuck with somebody that had something like that. Or someone with a bad cough, you'd be thinking, oh my God, that's, got, that's infectious, I'm going to have this now before this lift, before we get... A fireman comes through and carries me away over his shoulders. I'm going to be diseased. <laughs> no, I can't think of an individual. Um, I really can't think of an individual. Um, but there you go. It's just that's it, I suppose. The next question is about TV shows, which you like your your TV box set. So, which yeah. TV show uh, do you secretly watch? Um, 
I watch anything really that's on telly, but the, the, the one that I love, I think it's called Floggers, it, it, it is, every time it's on I watch it. And I love it for the fact that people are, it's not antiques that are worth a fortune that they're trying to sell and they're wondering how much they're going to get. These are everyday people with um, stuff that if they were in my house I'd probably just throw it out, I wouldn't be bothered flogging it. Um, the most I've ever seen anyone getting for something was probably about 60 quid or 70 quid or something like that. For something, and then they've got to pay the auctioneer's fees and they've got to get there and to do that. But it, I like those type of nice shows, like, and then Gogglebox, which is not a guilty secret or something like that, but I like those shows where there's no badness in them, reality shows where there's no badness, or where there's people that aren't making um, plans and schemes to get somebody else voted off. So something like Flog it, I do like, I have to say... Watching do people like do it. well for themselves yeah, and getting like, a bargain. Yeah, so I, nice, do like, I do like to see things like yes. that. There's no side to it, there's no badness involved in it. It's just everyday people doing everyday things and it's interesting to watch them. So I like Flog it would be the one out, I would say. And uh, number three, what's the worst or most disgusting habit you have? Oh, that's dead simple. I bite my nails. Um, and I can't, I really wish I could stop doing that. I, I've always bitten my nails um, and I don't know why. And I remember my mother, she tried, God love her, she tries every, she tried everything over the years when I was a kid. She used to get pyjamas that were too big and she used to stitch the sleeves so as I couldn't get them. But I bit through them. She got the, the stuff that you paint on your nails that tastes rotten. I got to like the taste of it. Um, she used to stitch gloves onto jackets and jumpers, so as when I put my arms through, they go straight into gloves. I bit through four gloves, I bit through everything. I bit through everything to get at my nails. So I don't know why, how, why I do it, but that's the, most, the worst thing, the worst, the most disgusting habit I have, I think. So if you were to be uh, played by an actor on a, on a mini-series or a film, what actor would you like to oh, play you? Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, <laughs> George Clooney. <laughs> No, let me see. Um, maybe I'd like. I can't imagine them ever making a film about me anyway, but if they did, an Irish actor. Um, uh, There's no one quite like you, really, that I can think of. <laughs> no, somebody Irish. And I would, I would say it would have to be somebody gay. You see, things that really are not. I've, I've seen. Unless the character is like a gay character that's the man next door or the woman next door or the boy, the boy next door or the man, the man next door or something like that. Uh, and actors, good actors can play them. If it's a camp gay man, straight men can... I've, I've never seen straight men being able to carry that off well, so it would probably have to be a gay actor. Um, but probably somebody Irish. Um, <clears throat> Not Brendan Gleeson, anyway. I know he'd know. God, no Brendan Gleeson. Um, God, could you imagine? No, he like I'm too fa I <laughs> I love Brendan Gleeson, but I mean he wouldn't. He doesn't look like me. <laughs> Dar, I don't look like him. Not in a million years. Um, and what would you consider to be your best feature? That's the fifth question. Oh, my best feature. Uh, well, all the, since I've been on Mrs. Brown's Boys, everyone's talking about me laugh and my sense of fun so I presume, I presume that would be it I'd say um, I find I can find funny things in the most serious I can find something funny in the most serious of things um, and I, I've always laughed I always love I, like I, I laugh a lot and I find absurd situations and then when I'm when I'm on stage with Mrs. Brown I have the best seat in the house when Mrs. Brown goes off on one because I'm sitting right beside her I can see her expressions I can I'm there, and I'm as close to her as anybody could possibly be when she goes off on one, and she, which she does, Mrs. Brown does all the time. Um, so I would say probably, but well, the one that surprised me um, since I became known on television was everyone was saying that they just love me laugh, and they love me. So I, I'd go with that, I mean, I... Okay, and what what's your, say. what's your, uh, the last question is, what was your most embarrassing moment that you can think of offhand? Um, I'm at an age now where I don't get embarrassed. Uh, I don't, uh, nothing embarrasses me now, but, oh God, yes, and I think I might have said this before on one of these Q&As. I was working in the Pink Elephant back in the 80s as a DJ, and uh, 
everyone used to go down there. I brought people from EMI, there was Queen were down there, Amanda Valle used to live down there, Phil Linnett was always there, um, and I knew all these people at this when I was there, and um, I remember one time I was flicking through records, if you can remember them, seven inch singles to see what record to play next, and this man said, do I have any, he said, do you have any Led Zeppelin? And I said, would you fuck off? I said, this is a disco. And he said, oh no, it's okay. He said, I used to sing in that band. And I looked up and there was Robert Plant standing in front of me. And I nearly passed get away, out. Get away. I was sick. He was down there that night. I don't know what he was over in Dublin for. He wasn't doing a gig, but he came in with BP Fallon, the journalist. But I, oh, I, there was no coming back from that. That was really embarrassing. And obviously I was so embarrassed because I still remember it. But did he take it with good humour at the time? Oh, he did. He laughed. And that was it. But I was still mortified and I still remember it. And he wanted to play Stairway to Heaven. No, we just asked for a Led Zeppelin. Oh, any Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. He said, do you have any Led Zeppelin songs? And I said, fuck off, it is. I was sick. I, and then the answer I got was a lovely answer, which was the best put down ever. Oh, I used to sing in that band. And I go, oh. Well, from uh, myself, Aubrey Citroen, and uh, Rory Cowan, Mrs. Brown's boys. Oh, now, before you go, look at Mark Bowen and T-Rex. My favourite, Mark Bowen, my big idol of all time. And as you can hear, I'm playing... Um, Electric Warrior, my favourite album of all time, so there you go. Um, listen, all the best. Next time, talk to you soon. Look Goodbye. Bye-bye.